Hi, good evening. Uh, this is Dan, and this is the House of Broken Dobbs Things. And uh, you're looking at a cluttered, messy bench. Uh, I talked about it in the previous episode that uh, we had recycled something from the previous kitchen work, and uh, this is still in the midst of uh, sorting. Uh, lots of stuff to be sorted, put away. Uh, finding some things I haven't seen in a while. But that's kind of how it goes. Uh, without further ado, tonight's project is a cooperative, and I'd like to put a big shout out to uh, JB from Oz, because he helped me with this uh, project. Uh, this is originally off of my Ford Boy uh, version. Uh, this is a standard Spindexer uh, that's had a, a sprocket added to it, and a stepper drive, and then a motor controller, and then uh, using an Arduino um, microcontroller over the top of that. So. The intent on this one is to allow me to cut some gears that are high big prime numbers uh, like uh, the infamous 127 gear that uh, a few of you heard me mention before. To get to my transposing on my Harrison lathe I'm going to need that and a few other gears but fortunately the other gears are pretty reasonable uh, set this big 127 tooth prime number. Prior to this I uh, had a NEMA 23 stepper on here and the ratio between this small sprocket and the large one is about a 2.5 to 1 um, 20 and a 50 so 2.5 to 1 and when I was doing a large prime number like 127 before I started cutting metal and making a general mess uh, I was double checking everything from an angle standpoint 90 degrees 45 degrees it seemed to work out pretty good but uh, taking the natural ability of a spindexer to have the casting hole and then there's a follow-up hole on the back side, you can see them down through the side there, that uh, you can actually use this to help double check your indexing. So, just zoom in on those real quick. Yeah, on the back side here. back side here you can see there's matching index marks and in the case of this one uh, I've got it lined right up with zero you know, get to the right one there's zero and that's a tapered punch it's a straight punch with a taper on the end so it lines up really nice when I get it in the right position there okay and that's I'm set on zero now, any one of these could be zero, depending on what you're doing. But in the case of this one, I'm going to move it 127 positions. No, I'm not going to drag you through every single one. Right, we're going to speed up and go through there. Sorry about that. That's Indy, the shop dog. Um, <clears throat> she's uh, taking a little look around. Now, yeah, she's back. All the other guys show their dog. I'm going to show my dog. So, from this, we're going to uh, index 127 positions and see what happens. And then I'll try to explain uh, the help that uh, JB gave me. And it was uh, actually very good advice. Uh, the error that I was trying to control, uh, I didn't have the bandwidth, if you will, to control it. So... We'll get into that in just a little bit, but I'm going to speed this up. I'm going to zip through here. We're going to see how close we come. Uh, hopefully, I did it once prior to that, just full disclosure. Seemed to line up. Now, let's see if we can do it twice in a row. Um, the interface is still in the prototyping phase. Right here. I know you really can't read the screen, but it's a... Hopefully, I can try see that yeah I've got it set for 127 in the positions and then I'll get some links at the bottom of this when we get done to kind of share where I found it and again we're prototyping here so that's why stuff is scattered all over and before I do it I'm gonna pull this pin out because other than that that bad things happen so uh, incrementally uh, we're gonna go I'm gonna 
basically have to fire up the uh, um, power supply. I'm going to cut the uh, volume down because that power supply is a very nice console power supply, but it just screams with the fan keeping it cool. It's a 14 amp, 24 volt, and it just makes a whale of a bunch of racket. So we'll get going here. Get this plugged in. Alrighty, now you get the general idea of what I was talking about, that whaling. So I'm going to cut the volume back. Uh, you won't be subjected to that. And I'm going to go ahead and start the stepping on this one. Uh, just process checking. I pulled the pin. And you're going to be able to see some incremental movement. I'm put this on here just for the giggles. So you can kind of see when it's coming back around. Alright, so again, I'm going to speed it up. I'm not going to drag you through all of it, but uh, here we go. One. Just 124 more to go. And I'll speed this up on video. Okay, we are at 63. I'm going to put a little light on here. You can see that. 63. And my zero is right at the very bottom one. And I'm at about 18, so it's uh, kind of hopeful that we're about halfway around. So, again, the 127 would be off of one rotation of the driven gear. For complete circuit and I started at uh, zero and zero in this hole right here okay. and I will bring you right back okay we are currently at 121 steps in and uh, we're gonna click off the last couple of here and then see if we line up and then uh, hopefully everything's gonna work out for us That's 124, 5, 6, 27. Look at that. Right up into the taper. That's awesome. I can't tell you how much I'm the help I got from JB because it was just you know one of those things and it's like uh, it's close and it was getting close but with cutting teeth it's like I, you know I'm not planning a, a trajectory through a black hole or something here but at the same time it's got to be pretty darn close um, I think that is going to give me the accuracy that I need to do uh, the kind of work that I need, at least just for one, um, and who knows. Uh, but it's interesting, when you get to the dividing heads, they very clearly tell you, uh, large high prime numbers, uh, sorry, there's no index ring for that. Uh, okay, sure. I'm sure we could probably get fancy and do it, but this also has another couple other functionalities to it. Um, you know, angle measurements, is it as fast as the Hardinge uh, Spindexer that I have? No. Is it uh, going to replace a dividing head? No, not really, but it definitely has its place. Uh, let me cut the power on the power supply to get the noise down. Okay, as you power that down. Uh, again, cost-wise, pretty, very inexpensive. You can find a spin dexter. It doesn't have to be a, a really great one. Used is perfectly fine. This is a phase two. Actually, a friend of mine gave it to me, so uh, that's kind of what I have going into that. Uh, and then the stepper motor. This one in particular is a NEMA 17 uh, with a 100 to 1 gear ratio. Inside here, there are three small planetaries set up in here to give you a 100 to 1 gear ratio. Why 100 to 1? Isn't that going to be really slow? Yep. Uh, is it going to be a lot of torque? Yep. So... Both of those are to your favor when you're cutting a gear. It's like, 
especially a large gear, you want to really be in control of it. Um, so I think that is a good one. The belt I've used on this one is a XL. Uh, they're smaller belts, but this one actually I like the size. Uh, the sprockets are available on Amazon, eBay, either way. But um, the other belts were just a little bit small for my liking, and that, that, that's fine. But uh, the XL is what I used here. Uh, this is the 20, and with this particular um, it's Stepper Online is the vendor. I am not related in any way to them. Not buying, not selling. But Stepper Online, straight from Amazon, and it had a six millimeter shaft, and then I had to bore it to an eight millimeter. And then this larger sprocket here, I can't remember the dimension on the shaft, but I had to bore that too. Uh, this is your, your standard tightening for your 5C. So that's just, just there. And on the opposite side, Get another look at this. It's just a straight spindexer. You gotta be careful with all my prototyping here. Well, why didn't you get it all finished before you showed us, Dan? I was too excited. Well, I think you guys can appreciate that. I was really excited. So, uh, the 5C goes in here, and then this goes in the other end, tightens up, pulls the 5C in, and then mount this to your mill, uh, horizontal, vertical, whatever you're gonna use, and index this up as far as true to the table and you're off to the races. The interface um, is an Arduino uh, and it's just any of the generic ones will be absolutely fine off of Amazon but it's going into a box but with the uh, nice quartz countertop you don't have to worry about shorting anything out. And uh, so. Uh, I'm going to copy a few things and link wise uh, and get this thing running. I've had this around for a long time and I sat down just to try to validate it before I started cutting anything and I was off. And kind of a panicked email to uh, JB because he does a ton of work with stepper motors in the past and then builds his own 3D printers and all that stuff, but uh, laser cutters, all kinds of crazy things. Anyway, but uh, big thanks to him. I think he's helped me give the uh, solution that's going to give me... There, there's always going to be error, just to be clear on that one. Um, 1 1.8 degrees on your normal stepper for a 200-step rotation. Uh, this with the 100 to, 100 to 1 is a 0 .018. So even with an error that I'm getting on having a prime number and not having an exact number of steps, it's a uh, just a minuscule amount of error of the number of steps I can do. Uh, to do a full rotation on this one, um, <clears throat> you're getting at, uh, to get a full rotation on the large one here, it's getting close to 50,000 steps. So quite a bit, a, quite a, quite a bit of uh, granularity in there to keep you from getting into trouble. But uh, the overall, the Spindexer, it's, again, I said it's off of the, my Ford Boy design. But uh, really pretty simple. It's just a piece of aluminum angle here at the bottom. And the motor is just setting on its own little NEMA bracket. And I just took it on the corner of that, milled out some slots. <clears throat> As you can see that, it's not super fancy. It was more for function. And then I've got to take these washers and trade them out for something slightly, slightly different, excuse me. Um, you want this to clear. Um, Lee Peden just did one uh, motorized uh, for his uh, surface grinder. We had that discussion. I just had it tightened up here. I didn't have it ready to go, but um, I'm going to bring this up just a smidge and take these uh, washers off and uh, replace them with something a little bit smaller. But that's it from tonight. Uh, I appreciate you stopping in. Again, my bench will continue to get cleaned off, but uh, I just wanted to knock this out and uh, get on to the next project very excited to start cutting metric threads here someday soon and from the house of broken dobs things thank you for uh watching and spending time with me and indy tonight and uh if you like the content please subscribe if you like to uh if you like it tell me if you didn't like it tell me and uh everybody have a great evening